Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Toxic Crime Tuesdays. If you're new to my channel, then hi. My name is Shannon and every single week I speak about a true crime case that has inspired me to speak out and share with you all. So if like me, you are a desktop detective, then please subscribe to my channel and also turn your notifications on so that you are notified every single time I upload a video. So this week's case is focuses on a certain subject that I've never actually covered yet. So if you haven't guessed by the title, this week's case focuses on a love triangle, well, a love affair that sadly ends in murder. So this, this is quite, this is an issue that is quite common. So sadly, the amount of people that actually have affairs is huge. It's a huge number. But there isn't that many of them that end in murder. And sadly, on the 11th of March, 2011, a beautiful young family lost their father and their husband forever. So this week's case, we are going to be speaking about, well, it involves four people mainly. So I'm gonna be speaking about, obviously, all four of these individuals because there is the two people that had the affair and their partners. So we need to speak about all of them in order to fully understand the true context of what happened. We're gonna start off with Candy Hall and her husband, Rob. So Candy Hall was 40 years old at the time of this event. Um, she lived in California with her husband, Rob, and her two teenage daughters. And then in 2010, she moved to Idaho. And this is when she was introduced to a man named Emmett Corrigan. They met, I think, through a mutual friend. Um, yeah, they were introduced and Candy actually worked within a law firm. But I think she was recently sacked from the law firm. Well, I don't know if she was made redundant or she was sacked, I'm not too sure about that. Some sources say sacked, some say made redundant, so I don't really know. And also as well, just before I dive any deeper, there isn't an awful lot of information. There's not that much coverage on this case, which I find quite strange because this case is just bizarre. Um, so yeah, I can't go as in depth as what I would like to. So I am basically just gonna give a little bit of background um, about each of the individuals and get straight into the main event and then the investigation. Candy and Emmett met through a mutual friend and they began their affair within about two weeks. And it was just, even though Emmett was actually 10 years Candy's junior, not that age matters anyway, of course. Um, but the connection between the two was instantaneous. There was just fireworks and I think between them two primarily it was just a physical connection I think they gave each other what they were craving from their partners and weren't quite getting not that I'm condoning having an affair because I'm absolutely not I think that both of them were just kind of lacking something in their relationship and they found it in each other Candy and Emmett were having an affair and Emmett had just started his own law firm. He had just branched out. He was studying to become a defense attorney. Emmett had recently qualified as a lawyer. He aspired to become a defense attorney and Emmett had just started his own practice. And this is when he decided to hire Candy as a paralegal within his firm. So the affair continued whilst they were working together and all of their colleagues and even some of their clients were aware that this affair was going on, which I find really disturbing that they just seemed to have no shame and just didn't seem to even 
hide it at all they didn't try to hide it from anyone especially your clients as well you want to be as professional and respectful as possible but to basically flaunt the fact that you're shagging someone else someone that isn't your wife or your husband to people that are hiring you to be their lawyer like i just ugh, i just find that really bizarre and just really trashy but i don't want to speak ill of the dead but i just find that yeah that's just not a good move and i just want to say as well that we are obviously speaking about having an affair and this is a subject that does infuriate a lot of people and so it should i don't condone having an affair whatsoever i know that it isn't as easy as just getting up and leaving a relationship especially when you have children especially when you have a home together you're married i know it's not as easy as just being like bye however having an affair is not the right way to go about it and yeah personally it's just i i know i do like to put myself in other people's shoes and i do like to think well what what would i do but I still think I wouldn't do it. Even if I did, I don't know, if I did meet someone and then we struck up a friendship and then I thought, oh my God, I'm falling in love with this person. I still don't think I would have an affair with them. I think I would be pretty upfront and honest with my partner that I'd fallen in love with someone else, but nothing had happened. and. I wouldn't want anything to happen until I was completely free of the relationship that I was in, in order to then start another one. But, you know, I suppose it's just one of those that you, you can't really judge unless you're in that situation. But we're all gonna judge a little bit. <laughs> but yeah, so this, this case obviously does focus on having an affair and at the end of the day having an affair is it's not a good move it is immoral in some people's eyes but that does not mean that it is ever okay to kill someone because of it murder and an affair i mean murder outranks it <laughs> so much more and it, yeah it's, it's just just don't just don't do it <laughs> So Candy was obviously banging Emmett the whole time she had a husband and two teenage girls at home. I'm pretty sure they were still living with um, Candy and Rob at the time. But whilst Candy had her own family, so did Emmett. Emmett had a wife named Ashley. She was 28 years old at the time. And they had five kids together and the baby was actually born whilst this affair was going on and one of the most disturbing parts of this case is that candy actually sent ashley like so many gifts for the baby and for ashley as well so the whole time she was banging her husband just after she had given birth she sent her loads of presents i just find that really weird and yeah i just think that's vile i just don't i don't understand why you would do that yeah this baby had not long been born and that's just oh, the whole affair is bad on emma anyway but the fact that like she had just his wife had just had a baby like it's supposed to be one of the most amazing and one of the most special times and it's one of those moments that it should bring you all closer together and the whole time he was sleeping with someone else and it's just i just don't get it i just think if you were really that unhappy like why not just leave or attempt like yeah just just leave so whilst this affair was going on um because <clears throat> it was going on for about six months ashley kind of had an idea that something was going on Emmett was spending a lot of time at work, which is kind of understandable in some ways. He had just started his own practice. So it is typical, you know, when you're starting your own business or anything like that, you do naturally put in more effort and more hours and all that when you're trying to get it all up and running and you're sort of finding your feet. However, Ashley just had that feeling. She just had that gut feeling, which 
I think if you've ever been cheated on, you know what that's like. You just know that there's something up and you can, you, you know, you know your partner and you know when they're acting strange. And I, I think most people, you know, you, you become so accustomed to the way that your partner behaves and the way that they react to certain things. And when they start behaving differently to that, that's when you know that something's up. And, you know, sometimes it's an indicator that they're looking elsewhere, which is sad. But please don't get that wrong and think that... <laughs> just because your partner's acting a little bit weird recently that they're cheating on you please don't take that from what I'm saying I, I think you can all kind of gather what I'm saying anyway it just may be worded poorly and Rob Candy's husband he kind of figured that something was up as well like Rob had allegedly he had previously had affairs as well and his whole relationship with Candy was really really rocky and before the relationship with Emmett had even started, their relationship was just, it just wasn't working out. But I don't think either of them were prepared to actually go through with a divorce. I think because of how complicated divorces can be and they worried how it would impact both of their daughters. So they still tried to kind of give it a go, um, but it just wasn't working out. When Candy had the job previously to Emmett's firm, she did put in so much time and effort into her job. I think she kind of become a slave to her job. She didn't really want to spend much time at home. She felt uncomfortable in her own home. She, well, her, her and Rob just wasn't getting on. So she would rather have been at work than at home. And then obviously when the relationship with Emmett had started, she was putting even more hours in, but that was for a whole number of reason. And Rob, obviously, he knew that Candy was putting in a lot of hours at work and that wasn't that different to her previous job. However, her behaviour and just how cold and distant she was towards him more so than ever, he just knew that something was going on and ashley as well she she was very suspicious of candy she would say to herself like she would constantly have to reassure herself because she she would i don't know there would be certain things that would happen and she would just think oh my god what if he's having an affair with her but then she would reassure herself and say no look Emmett's, he's just turned 30. She's 10 years older than him. Like, he's like a mother to her. He sees her more at, in a motherly role. And Ashley would like, when um, Candy first started working for Emmett as well, Ashley actually said to him, like, I don't really have a good feeling about her. I don't know why. She was pretty right, but she just didn't, yeah, she just had that feeling. You, you know that when you just get a vibe from someone that they're just a bit of a dick uh, or just not your kind of person. And I think that's what Ashley just thought. I don't think initially she thought that Candy was shagging her husband at all. She just got a weird vibe from Candy. Ashley verbalized this to Emmett and he said to her, no, look, she she's great. And she thinks I'm gonna do really well. And she really does believe in me. So Ashley just kind of let it go and just thought, oh, maybe they're good for each other in a work sense. You know, maybe she's the kind of person that he needs by his side at work. You know, he needs someone to sort of build him up and tell him like how good he is at his job and, you know, praise him and be there for him with work matters, not others. <laughs> Emmett and Candy began to see each other more and more. I don't know if there was actually love there. I don't know if they ever spoke about, you know, running away together and like happily running off into the sunset and being together forever. I don't think it was like that. I think it was purely sexual. It was just pure chemistry. That was all. But they weren't willing to give each other up for anything. They enjoyed what they did. I think the thrill of sneaking around, going into each other's cars in abandoned p car parks and having sex was pretty thrilling for them. So they just didn't want 
to stop. And the whole time that this was going on and it was just transpiring, Ashley was just really struggling inside. Ashley had even decided to start couples counselling, obviously with Emmett. And she would end up having to go by herself. Emmett would just refuse to go or he would just not turn up. And there was one time when Ashley was in her counselling session, I think it was her first one, and she was like shouting at the therapist, like, can you fix me? You need to fix me. I need to know what's wrong. And the therapist turned around and said to her, like, Ashley, I feel like something's really wrong. And I think that's when it kind of kicked in for Ashley and she started to believe her gut instinct and she kind of knew that Emmett was elsewhere when he was supposed to be at work or at home. Even their children would ask Ashley, like, mummy, does daddy even live here anymore? Which I just think is really sad. Just that it must, he must have like hardly ever been there for the children to notice it that much to wonder why he was never there and to actually wonder whether he even lived there or not i think that's really awful that it started to affect the children that much so it got to the point where ashley decided right i need to do something i need to fix my relationship and bless her she didn't need to it wasn't her that needed to put in the effort it was emmett and i just I cannot help but just feel so sorry for her and just wonder what she was going through every single day. It just must have been absolutely heart-wrenching. So Ashley decides she's going to do something. She's going to try and fix her marriage. So she decides she's going to have a dinner that night, like a really special dinner. She was gonna cook a really lovely, proper like gourmet meal. She dressed the kids up all nice and fancy and they all sat down for dinner and waited for Emmett but sadly Emmett just didn't turn up for a few hours and he'd come home the food was cold the kids were tired and it was just an absolute disaster and Emmett just come in and he was just grunting he just looked grumpy and he didn't even have any of the food that Ashley like literally slaved away for hours cooking. Didn't even acknowledge the children or Ashley. And Ashley was just sort of asking him what was up. And then he started to pick an argument over something really petty. And then he just said to her, look, I'm just going to go to Walmart. I'm going to go get some medicine because I really don't feel well. And he said that he had a cold. So then Emmett left. He got in his car and drove away. And this would be the last time that Ashley and their children would ever see their father and husband again. So this is May the 11th, 2011. I don't think I actually said that. So, yeah, this is the date. Emmett does go to Walmart. Going to get medicine wasn't the reason he went there. He actually drove to the car park to meet Candy. Candy drove there also. She got out of her car and got into Emmett's car. And they drove to like a secluded area. And this is when they had sex. This is also when their affair would finally be revealed. So Rob was at home and Candy had sort of like abruptly left. She said that she just needed to run a few errands. And if it, this was sort of in the evening and Rob was a bit suspicious of this, but he didn't really question it. That was until his daughter rang him. She was driving along the road and she saw her mother's car abandoned, parked at Walmart. Well, on a road near Walmart. And she rang her dad and sort of like questioned it and wondered what the hell was going on. So then Rob rings Candy and Candy answers the phone and sort of tries to explain what's happened and, you know, tries to lie her way out of it. And this is when Emmett grabs the phone and it's unclear of what he actually said but he apparently was quite aggressive and quite threatening towards rob and i think he was quite cocky and this is when rob proceeds to get in his car and drive to find them so rob gets in his car by this point he is absolutely 
infuriated. He knows exactly what was going on and little did Candy know that Rob actually had proof of the affair. He had printed out emails between Candy and Emmett, basically speaking pretty incriminatingly. <laughs> you know, they were exchanging explicit messages about what they wanted to do to each other. You know, all that sexual stuff that I'm not gonna get into. Not today. So Rob gets in his car, he is pissed. He drives to, and it's Walgreens, not Walmart, I apologize. I'm not American, it's all the same to me. So he finds Candy's car and he parks on the opposite side of the road where he is just out of the view from the surveillance camera. And about 17 minutes later, Candy and Emmett can be seen returning back to Candy's car and Rob is there waiting for them. Not long after this, a call comes in to 911 and it's Candy screaming hysterically saying that there has been a shooting. When Emmett and Candy were confronted by Rob, Emmett was kind of just leaning up against his car, not really bothered about the whole situation and the two men got into an argument understandably. Rob confronted Emmett about what the was he doing shagging his wife he was having a go at candy as well understandably and he was basically telling him like look i know exactly what you're doing why the fuck are you doing it what the hell is going on what do you think you're doing and Emmett allegedly was quite cocky and was just like well she doesn't want to be with you and this is when rob simply states like look you've got a wife at home who has just had a baby whilst you're out with my wife like that is wrong and that is a fair statement but this pissed Emmett off and they got into a fight and this is when rob proceeds to shoot Emmett two times and then tried to shoot himself in the head and then missed so when this went to trial prosecutors claimed that that was Rob's plan all along. His plan was, it was premeditated. It wasn't a crime of passion. It, he had planned it for a while. He had known exactly what was going on and he had planned it. He had that gun on him. He knew what he was gonna do with it. He knew who he wanted to shoot and that was Emmett and he knew he wanted him to die. And probably he would not be able to cope with the aftermath so he wanted to shoot himself as well so once Emmett was shot twice he fell to the ground and Candy called 911 immediately Rob had a bullet wound on the top left side of his head however luckily for him it did not penetrate all the way through but it did cause or potentially cause amnesia so he did not remember what had actually happened so the only witness to this event was candy and she gave conflicting statements she simply stated that she did not meet up with emmett to have sex they never had an affair nothing was ever going on they were simply just good friends and emmett was just really struggling that evening and so was candy so they just met up in his car to have a chat they had a heartfelt chat about both of their lives and how much of a car crash both of their lives were and they were simply just being there for each other and that was all but there's so much evidence to suggest otherwise i don't know i don't know who who buys that bullshit i certainly don't i don't know do you guys think they were having an affair or not let me know in the comments down below so emmett sadly died at the scene he had obviously suffered two bullet wounds one to the chest and one to the head the one to the head being the fatal wound so whilst all of this was going on poor ashley and her five children were at home probably all in bed awaiting their father and husband's eventual arrival however he never come home i can just like i can just not even begin to imagine how that feels being related to a victim and just awaiting their arrival, being none the wiser, not having any idea that they've just died. 
and not even not that you want to see with someone dead or dying but not even being able to be there with them to hold their hand and yeah just sort of waking up in the morning and thinking like just expecting that person to be there like they always would day in day out and then for them to not be there and to never be there ever again it just must be absolutely heartbreaking two men have just pretty much lost their lives forever Emmett is dead a whole family have lost their father and husband and the same for rob as well he will be in prison for a very long time and all of this over an affair it just does not seem worth it whatsoever when it comes to murder there is no good enough reason for it anyways but especially an affair when it could have just been easily more easily replicated. So when the trial happened, obviously Rob couldn't really testify. He couldn't really give his side of the story because he could not remember it. Prosecution, they claimed that Rob was a man scorned, which he was, that it was premeditated, that he had planned this for a very long time and he knew exactly when that was going to happen and how it was going to happen however the defense they claimed a different story naturally they stated that he was just pushed to the brink that rob had never wanted this to happen and it was simply a crime of passion that he had just been beaten down time and time again that he knew this affair was going on but he just did not want to believe it and that he just wanted to try so hard to make his marriage work and that he loved candy and he was willing to forgive her however his when his suspicions were finally confirmed by that phone call from his daughter that was it for him he just snapped and he had to do something about it and unfortunately that meant a man losing his life so Rob Hall, he pleaded not guilty, but the jury found him guilty of second degree murder and he was sentenced to 30 years in prison. So during the trial as well, like obviously Ashley was there and she said she was absolutely disgusted because Rob and Candy, they were both being so loving towards each other they were shouting across the room and they were saying to each other like i love you i forgive you i'm gonna be here and i just think that's just massively disrespectful to ashley like that these two have managed to reconcile and ashley is never was never allowed that opportunity because her husband is dead because of rob and i just find that incredibly sad and just really shit for her and i just think they sh should have been so much more respectful because they they both caused this in one way or another and they just should have been so much more mindful of ashley and her feelings and what exactly she was going through and it's just like it just seemed that her feelings were just cast aside but luckily since this horrific ordeal ashley has actually found love again with a man named Scott. They got married and they welcomed their first child together. And after Emmett's murder as well, Ashley actually started a non-profit organisation, which is called A Reason to Stand. And it's specifically for trauma victims. I just think it's really great. I really like it when, um, you know, some kind of good comes from such a tragic story. And it's, it's always nice to see when families of victims, they try to do some kind of good. They try to take the good out of such a sad and just horrific situation. And they try to do good for other people and try to pass on their story and try to inspire others. And I just think that's just incredibly brave and really, really great. So in 2012, Candy was actually sentenced to prison herself. However, this was for a different reason entirely. Candy embezzled $32,000 from her former employer. Candy was sentenced to 14 years in prison, but was able to seek parole after just two years. 
So I'm not too sure if she's out of prison. I'm guessing she is. Don't really care, to be honest. <laughs> But yeah, that is it for this story. Um, I'm really sorry that there wasn't an awful lot of information about it. I hope I've told it well enough and tried to be as descriptive as possible. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts and opinions. And yeah. Also, it was my birthday just a couple of days ago. I turned 28. <laughs> Um, and I just want to thank you guys for your messages and yeah, your love and support. It just, yeah, it's great. You guys are great. And it's actually really weird because like I turned 28 and I actually, <laughs> my partner's birthday is just two days after mine. And uh, we went shopping in Asda and I went to buy him. This was the day before my birthday and I went to buy him some, um, you know like sparklers on a cake um to obviously go on his cake and uh yeah so i got some shopping as well and i was paying for it and then <laughs> obviously i had a mask on and then this woman said to me like the cashier she was like oh can you just remove your mask so i can see how old you are and i was like oh okay so i like just pulled it down and uh yeah and she kind of looks at me and just it's like she couldn't really figure out how old I was and she was like unsure so I said to her like oh how old do you need to be to buy like sparklers and she went 16 16 <laughs> I was like I'm 28 tomorrow <laughs> do I? I I know I look younger than what I am especially when I don't have makeup on I do look really really young I do still look like a child but well, not a child, but youthful. But I did not think I looked under 16. Like, I do still get ID'd for alcohol and stuff. And even that I find quite bizarre. But fucking 16 to buy sparklers. I just couldn't believe it. I was just... I was flabbergasted and flattered at the same time. So, yeah, that was kind of funny. <laughs> But, yeah, 28 now. In two years' time, I'm going to be 30. 30. I don't know why it's such a big deal to turn 30, but I feel like when you get to 30, you can't... There's certain behaviours and certain things that you can't really excuse when you get to 30, you know? Do you know what I mean? You know, you can't really be like... I don't know, I feel like... Even though, obviously, I'm an adult, but I feel like when I'm 30, I'm a, I'm a real adult. Like, I'm a proper adult. Like, a grown-up. And that's scary. So, I just hope these two years go by really slowly. <laughs> I'm probably going to be, like, the youngest-looking 30 year old. No, that's not a bad thing. Anyways, I'm going to stop rambling about my youthful looks <laughs> anyways thank you so much for watching i really really appreciate it i appreciate each and every one of you i would absolutely love it if you're not already if you would subscribe to my channel maybe click the like button leave a comment and if you think it's worthy of sharing maybe share it as well i will always be appreciative of all of your love and supports thank you so much for watching and i will be back again next week for another episode of toxic crime tuesdays bye guys <laughs>